My name is Linus Pervolas and uh, I'm from Lithuania and uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Continuant. So for uh, five years or so I was working in the replication field, developing, helping to develop Tungsten. Um, my major responsibilities are developing heterogeneous replication when you replicate out of MySQL to Oracle, PostgreSQL, or some uh, data warehouses, and uh, I will talk about that also. And uh, But today I will present a more general slide set covering more about the open source tungsten replicator, how it is flexible and fun. And uh, at the very, very end, I will briefly introduce you to the uh, commercial product tungsten, without which there were there would be no tungsten replicator. So, with that said, we can dive in. Uh, today's topics: we'll see how replicator works, how to build complex topologies, uh, how to cure replication slave lag. How to hack the replicator, that is to develop some your own features, and uh, finally building clusters. Um, one slide about my company, the company I'm working at. Uh, Continuum is leading provider of replication and clustering solutions for open source databases. And uh, as mentioned, we have two products: the replicator and Tungsten Enterprise. And uh, what Continuum sells is consulting for the replicator and uh, subscriptions for the enterprise software. So let's dive in. Um, replicator is essentially a fast open source replication engine or a like message sending engine uh, designed for transactions and for uh, database data. It is GPL version 2, written, the core is written in Java, we have some installers written in Ruby, and uh, is designed primarily for speed and flexibility. Where you can get it? You can get it from the codegoogle.com, there's tungsten replicator, right here. And uh, you can find uh, the source code, the builds here. We also have a nice wiki page, which uh, covers most uh, popular topics and topologies. And of course, the bug tracker. You can register and uh, submit bugs. Um, there is also a mailing list, and we invite you to participate. Um, Replicator has four basic commands. Uh, one is tungsten installer, which you use for installing Replicator. Uh, then Replicator, which controls the process, the Java process. And TREP CTL, which stands for TREP con control, uh, which manages the replication. And uh, finally, the THL, which allows you to drill down to any specific transaction and see what's inside of it. And we'll use almost all of these today. Um, let's talk a little bit about the architecture of the replicator. This is a slide that demonstrates one of the possible replicator uh, configurations. Uh, the replicator is like constructor, you can build it. And uh, in this slide you can see that uh, the fundamental block is the pipeline. So the pipeline takes something at the beginning from a, a database or a storage and puts it back to another database or, or some other storage. So the pipeline consists of multiple stages. And uh, here you can see the three stages. And uh, the first stage has extractor, which extracts from the MySQL database. Then you can do some filtering to the transaction. You can remove data, you can add data, data, or you can assign some metadata. So 
then you can then the stage applies, and it can apply to uh, in this example into THL, which is called transaction history log. And transaction history log is uh, very important in the replication because it allows us to have global transaction IDs. So then we know each transaction, we can identify each transaction across uh, multiple servers. And this is really important. Uh, and uh, at the last stage, we apply it to the database. This is just one example. You can configure it to uh, multiple different pipelines. But I wanted to show you that it is flexible. Um, let's see how multiple replicators connect to each other. So this is uh, a slide that has two replicators and a master and a slave. The vanilla installation. So in the master, you have MySQL database and replicator installed. In the MySQL, you enable, well, actually, we can enable it for you, but you need to enable binary logs, binary logging. Uh, why? Because the replicator extractor tails the binary logs. <coughs> it understands them and uh, reads each transaction, each new transaction from it. So, when it extracts the transaction, it puts it into transaction history log to, to save it and to be crash safe. So, then um, we have a slave at the bottom. The slave also has a transaction history log and MySQL corresponding MySQL database. We usually enable the binary logs in this MySQL too. Just because uh, if you need to switch the master and slave, you want the slave to be ready to handle the master responsibilities and to read out the MySQL database. And uh, this slave also has the THL. So when you put something in the MySQL master database, it is written, let's say you do a transaction, it is written to the binary log, replicator reads it, puts it into its own THL, and then serves the slaves, which uh, then apply this transaction to local MySQL. Yes? Does it work for any kind of bin log output format? Is it row, mixed, and statement? Yes, uh, it works with row, mixed, and statement. We, there is uh, different uh, scenarios which, which is better to use. And let's say for heterogeneous replication, you want to use row-based replication. And we can talk about that later. Um, so that was multiple processes, multiple replicator processes. Now let's look at single replicator process and uh, how it is flexible, how it is it flexible. So each replication uh, process can have multiple services inside of it. Oh, I'm sorry to be late. I welcome. So, um, this means that you, you may have multiple pipelines, different pipelines, in one single Java process. And uh, this allows to have, for example, replication from one MySQL uh, replicator, which uh, can replicate to, let's say, MySQL and Oracle. On the other hand, what it also provides is multi-master replication. And uh, I'll show you how. So, in this slide, there is an example of so-called Fanon replication. When you have <coughs> two MySQL servers, and they're replicating to a single MySQL service, MySQL server. And this is achieved by using two different services, alpha and beta. So let's try to build some topologies. Um, before we do that, let's review the features, the replicator features that allows us to do that. As mentioned, global transaction IDs. This is critical, uh, both for 
identifying transaction on each server. Without it, you cannot do multi mastery. Without it, you do not have crash safety. You cannot do failover uh, reliably. Then transaction filtering. So, as mentioned, you can transform the transaction, or as we call it, event inside the replicator as needed. It also allows to do cross-version replication with MySQL, so you can replicate down version. Mentioned fan-in replication, multi-master, and heterogeneous replication. And uh, finally, the parallel replication, which cures the slave lab. Uh, for the demos, I will use a nice tool from my colleague Giuseppe Magia, which is called Tungsten Sandbox. And if you want to play with Tungsten, this is the most easiest way to set it up. You can set up like five servers on your <coughs> machine. You don't need uh, virtual machines. Okay, let, let's take a basic question. So who has used uh, Sandbox for just MySQL? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so there also exists uh, by, by Giuseppe yep. this tool, which is very useful if you need to test the, like different MySQL versions quickly. And uh, Tungsten Sandbox is using the MySQL Sandbox yeah. also. Uh, who has used uh, Tungsten Replicator? Okay. So, um, as mentioned, you can get MySQL Sandbox from uh, CPAN. <coughs> and uh, you can get Tungsten Sandbox from tungstenreplicator.org page. So let's try to build something. <coughs> we'll try the most simple topology, master-slave replication, one master and a few slaves. And we'll use uh, the command below. So, first, what I have here, I have uh, Tungsten Replicator downloaded and extracted. To, you can get the replicator from the downloads, <coughs> sorry, from the homepage and uh, the most recent nightly build, you can get from the build server. So, it's all available here. So, I have a build here. And uh, I also have the Tungsten Sandbox uh, already prepared. With this command, I, I tell the Sandbox to use the MySQL version 5.5.18 .5 and uh, to generate for me the master-slave topology. And what it will do now, it will first install MySQL Sandbox so on this machine, on single servers, server, it will install free MySQL servers. And then it uh, calls the tungsten installer for you. So it configures the uh, replicator uh, to run on different ports on this machine so they would not conflict. Um, and this allows us to have free replicators inside. <coughs> and then I have some uh, handy commands from the Tungsten Sandbox, which allow me to test the, the installation. Let's do it like that. So, there's command test topology, which will just check for you whether everything is working. And so before we started this talk, I, my network connection on this Mac really screwed up. And it was enough to hook up the wireless connection and everything went wrong. So, like, for an hour or so, I tried to uh, fix it, and uh, now it works. So, how did I knew that it went wrong? I, this test topology command did not succeed. And uh, there is a command called services underscore all, and it reports at which position each uh, of the replicators is. So, you can see that they are all at sequence number five. And this is the global transaction ID. Uh, 
uh, we, are, we call it sequence number. And uh, I can check whether the replication is working by just uh, going to the master. To the master tungsten replicator bin folder and using the mentioned trepctl command and uh, the most basic call is the heartbeat heartbeat inserts okay, heartbeat inserts a transaction in the master and uh, it then replicates to the slave to all the slaves and i have no idea why <laughs> That's interesting. Let's try just let's just try to go directly to the MySQL. I will create some table I out. Oh. So I created a table on the master. <coughs> ah, good. And uh, we can see that all the slaves received the new sequence number. So it's at sequence number six. Of course, if I go to the uh, slave, I will see that table high all there. Um, now, If I go to the uh, replicator on the master and issue a THL command, uh, that's not really visible. Okay, let's try it one more time. Um, I can see what transactions are saved in this particular replicator transaction history log. And, uh, so we have six transactions, and I can actually uh, list any of them. Uh, so I will list the last transaction, and uh, we can see this event, which contains the default schema, the schema on which the transaction was issued, and uh, the actual transaction, as all the um, DDL statements are saved as uh, statements, uh, we see the plain text representation. But if I go back to the database and insert some data into our new table, so I inserted a number 333, and I list the last transaction in THL, uh, in this case, I also see that I have a um, statement. But if it were row replication, I would actually see the row representation, and I will, uh, the row representation of this transaction. And I will show you that in another demo. I have a question. Yes. Um, how come when you did the heartbeat, it wasn't a transaction? So you did a heartbeat. No, it, sh it should have worked. Uh, that's so it would have been transaction eight instead because yes. it was in the heartbeat. Oh, yes, okay. it just inserts a row into. A That's what I thought. <coughs> and I was like, but how is that not a transaction? How did it, that it, it is. It, it's demo. It just didn't work. Okay. <laughs> Today I'm lucky with those. <coughs> so and to erase the everything like MySQL tungsten, you just do erase sandbox. So while it's erasing, let's check another topology, Fanon when you have multiple <coughs> servers replicating into a single service to aggregate the data. So, for that I will use the following command. Can you see it? So again, we tell which MySQL version to use, and we just provide the topology that it is a fanning. But um, 
what we say additionally is which note to use as the uh, aggregating note. In this case, it will be the fourth note. And uh, let's try to set this up. And these command snippets that you see here, these are just tungsten installer commands which you normally use to install tungsten on your production servers. Uh, but as everything is installed here on a single server, we need to use different ports. And uh, the this, this sandbox makes it a lot easier. And you can see that it is using um, uh, different THL ports for for each of the services by using, by providing the parameters. Okay. <coughs> it got a little bit slow. So, we have a new uh, topology with uh, a few replicators now. And uh, here. We have multiple masters on the uh, node number one, on the node number two and three. And uh, on the fourth node, we have three slave services. So, do remember I was mm, telling you about that one replicator can support mul multiple services. This is the example when a single fourth replicator supports Alpha, Bravo and Charlie services in a single process. And uh, why is it important? I can now connect to, the, to any of the masters Let's say I connect to the first master, create um, a table. And uh, if I go back and issue services command, I can see that the master alpha has, latent, uh, has sequence number increased. So it's one now. And on the fourth slave, the alpha service has increased sequence number. Now, if I go back and uh, create some commands on the second database server, the slave received uh, that in a, in a separate uh, service, that transaction. And, of course, if we go back to the, to the slave and go back to the test database and we check the tables, we can see that both tables are here, from which were created in different MySQL servers. So this is useful for aggregating data. And let's drop this topology. And you can see that this is really easy. All I'm doing is setting up sandboxes. Uh, question. Yes. If those uh, masters have the same uh, table, same name table, and bo in both masters have insert the same or okay change or new data, what happened? Mm -hmm. uh, you would receive an error because. Uh, we don't resolve the conflicts for you, but we can identify. So you would receive what you learn <coughs> while issuing the second um, transaction on the second master. And where is the arrow? Where, where do you see the arrow? On the slave. There is no magic in multi-master. You need to 
have uh, independent uh, flows of data which do not conflict. So, for example, in this, in the next example, uh, where we have all masters topology. This all masters topology is a. It changes, for example, the MySQL ring topology. How you do multi master in MySQL. It has no single point of failure because you can remove any of the masters and all of the rest will work. And uh, the idea behind this, the usage behind this, is when you have, uh, let's say, multi tenant database where you have uh, different schemas <coughs> on each of the master and uh, you exchange data in those schemas with the other masters. Um, another way... But okay. wait, so of course I can also uh, design my application in such a way that uh, on several nodes I write to the same table, but I know that they will not conflict. For instance, if I only do updates, I don't delete or insert rows, I, I know that these rows will always exist everywhere. Right. But, oh. I do different kinds of but you're talking about regular MySQL replication? No, with, uh, with Tungsten. Well, yeah. So, so then the updates will succeed, right? Yep. You, you will not, uh, Tungsten will not prevent me from doing it. Right? Yep. Or, for example, if you have uh, multiple masters across the globe, uh, and let's say you know, you have the same table, uh, client's table, but you know that uh, US uh, application will only update and insert clients from the US yes. with the type US. This is a good example. And Europe will only update and insert clients with the type Europe. It will also not conflict, though it is in the same table. Yes. Yeah. Repl uh, Tungsten does not uh, put these constraints but uh, you need to be aware of them. Uh, in situation multi-master, if I really have two updates same time, but they can't uh, uh, arrive same time to the this uh, destination, which mm. one is overriding the later one? Which uh, which one is overriding the other one? Because if I'm updating two points, mm -hmm. same thing, but they are, of course, arriving in little different times. Yeah, this is a race condition. Yeah. And, uh, you really need to design the application to uh, avoid these yeah. conflicts. So, in this case, you would just... Uh, it's, it's not uh, possible to guess. Most likely it will because be... Because it's, it's not error. Uh, condition. It don't give error in well, that because... You said that the error is on the slave. So the, the first statement would go through yeah. and would be okay, and yeah. then the second statement that comes from the slave would be a duplicate key error, right? But it would not be a duplicate key because okay. it's an update. So your or example it, be, it would update, yeah. Whichever one comes second would override then. Yeah. No, but, but you could also, like the race condition is that you could end up uh, with uh, both of them overriding each other, so... Only if you didn't use the transaction properly. No, no, it, because you write to two different nodes. Yep. So ah, so it would be there. inconsistent on one, one yeah. node would be different so you, from another. you end up with two different nodes. Oh, Just to be clear, the, the ideal uh, <coughs> usage... That's why you shouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The usage for this is when you have multiple schemas uh, and you just your application on one master is using one schema and application on another master is using another schema. Let's look how this works. Uh, instead of this example, I will show you this example. This is different. This is star topology, uh, which is as powerful as all masters, but as you can see, we have removed, at least in this example, three linkages. This uh, saves the bandwidth uh, substantial, substantially. And uh, though you might think that it introduces a single point of failure, with tungsten, if the hub node failed, you can easily just redirect the other nodes to connect to, let's say, through another node. So, but. 
the star topology is good because you save bandwidth and uh, it's easier to manage. So let's look how to set this up. Again, the command is pretty simple. I just uh, tell the sandbox that it should use the star topology and uh, I provide the, the hub that it's, uh, the hub will be the first node and that there will be four nodes. And uh, we can see how to use different schemas for multi-master. It will take a little bit of time to install because each of these nodes will have uh, at least two services. So the spokes will have two services, one for itself and one for the hub. And the hub will have four services in total, because it needs to serve all the node and itself. Is it clear uh, about the concept services? What is, what is it? Okay. <laughs> Let's try to <coughs> to clear this up. The beauty with uh, the tungsten replicator is that whether you, uh, whether the replicator is master or the slave it can serve uh, transactions. So you can have a slave, and you can actually do a slave of a slave. Okay. Um, and uh, so you have various uh, chains of data flowing. So, while it's installing, when you have a single master and a single slave, you have one service, let's say alpha, in the master and the slave. And you replicate in that service, from alpha to alpha. If you want to use, to make this slave also a master, to have bidirectional replication, you install a service beta on the, on the slave, and on the original master. But you configure it so this node connects to, the, to this node. So with two services you can have <coughs> bidirectional replication between the two nodes. Does one service always have a single master? Yes. One you service... You have as many services as you have master. Exactly. Okay. One service has single master and to as many as you want slaves. Okay. But now we understand. <laughs> um, so if I, so we have this um, start topology installed, and if I do the services command, you will see a lot of services. And uh, let's begin from the central one. So here, here it is. The first node, the hub, contains four services. Because it is a master, it contains alpha service for it as a master, and then a service for each of the masters that connect to it. And the spokes have uh, only two. The one that connects to the hub and to itself as a master. So Let's see whether this works. I will create multiple schemas in the uh, hub node. And uh, then 
I will connect to one of the masters I can see all those free schemas. So the, the idea is now that you will <coughs> use the schema 3 from your third master and the schema 2 from your second master and this way the <coughs> transactions will not conflict but they will always uh, receive, be received in all the other masters. So I have connected to uh, node 3 I'm creating some table and I can connect to let's say node 4 I will use the DB3 and I can see that the table is there and uh, vice versa and by using multiple schemas you avoid conflict it's the easiest way to do it you could use the same table in the same schema but then you need to design the application very carefully. Any questions about this? I'm about <coughs> to delete this. So, um, this is a bit like behind the scenes question, but uh, if you have this kind of multi-master topology, uh, uh, what, what about the MySQL uh, log slave updates? Setting. Does it matter if it's on or off? Hmm. So my, my it you, reads from the binary log. Yeah, you need to have it on. Yes. Because well, if you have a topology, oh, you're, that you're asking makes because uh, what happens? How to avoid like loops, right? Y yes, something like that. Yeah, uh, we avoid loops with the filters. Uh, <coughs> because we have the ability to drop events so we can identify if you have uh, the same event coming back let's say you have master master but how, how do you identify the event we have the tr global transaction id which is which contains also the origin but the mysql binary log does not have a global transaction ID. But no but it has the origin server id how does mysql prevent loops it does it with the server ID. Can you? You can't set the server ID, can you? Uh, we don't set the server. You are, you are just the MySQL client. So how how do you? When when one transaction comes in and it's applied on the slave, how do you prevent it from go, going back the other way? That's a good question. This is like a. <coughs> how do you log the origin? Curiosity. Obviously, it works. <laughs> okay. I think the best answer would be to show. So I, I understand you can manage this like within the, the tungsten pipelines, uh, because you can have any information you want. But but when it goes into my scale and the binary log and you read it again. How, how do you know that this is uh, a transaction that already originated well, first, from the tungsten applied? Uh, in the THL, each transaction uh, has the uh, binary, log, binary log position. I can show you. Maybe it will be more clear. Just a second. <coughs> is not configured completely. So I'm, go I'm using the THL command here. I'm going to the hub node mm -hmm. and uh, service alpha 
let's see, we have four, 54 events. I do list. Sequence number 54. And uh, in this, um, you can see the comment at the end of a uh, transaction. You can see at the very, very end, we add a comment, service equals Charlie. Okay. So what if I use row-based replication? Or row-based binary lock? It, uh, there's a place. <coughs> I think we do have those comments there also. Um, would you like to try? I think you can, you can set... Uh, yeah, exactly. You can set just uh, for your session. Okay, we need <coughs> a master. Let's see. DP. Free. Show <coughs> tables. Do you remember from the top of your head? Command. Set bin log format <coughs> equal raw. Oops, I don't I forget it's. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can set session or set cloud. <coughs> okay. Let's go back to the new transaction. And uh, as you can see, <coughs> Yeah, it didn't set it for some reason. No, you need to set session. When you do set global, it doesn't change your own session. Right, it doesn't change until the next time you log in. Yeah. But now, now if you log in again, it will work. Sorry, I lost my terminal. Where was I? Is this interesting for everyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because this, this is a user group meeting, I think we can do some detours from the main track. If I promise this is the only one. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gotten to the interesting part yet, is the thing. It's the magic of when we see it happen, is the, is the interesting part. Yeah. Uh, Session. But it's already set, but it doesn't matter. <coughs> that should make the trick right. <coughs> DB3, I think. Yeah. yeah, you have to do DB3. Thanks. Okay, let's connect <coughs> to that server. <coughs> I'm just searching for the correct service that contains this event. There we go. Ah. Okay, so in the metadata of the row replication event, you can see that uh, we have the MySQL server ID. During the installation, we set at least in the sandbox, each MySQL server ID to be unique. And we also add the metadata, in the met metadata, the service name. So we have the service alpha, which was actually the origin. And uh, this is the shard ID. We automatically shard 
the data. But in general, this is the thing that avoids, that allows us to filter out any replication loops. Okay. Does this answer the question? Yes, it's, it's unclear to me where this is in the binary lock. Maybe we should continue. I could go to the extractor code. But yes, so uh, <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> yeah. it, it definitely is there. Okay. Where was I? Ah, I was about to delete this. Uh, <laughs> Here. Okay. Now, th let's move on to different topics. I think we have covered uh, the topologies. As you can see, it's very versatile. You can do various things. Um, <coughs> and it's pretty easy. Batch loading. Uh, one of the interesting projects I had with my colleagues is uh, when you have MySQL database and the uh, client wants to load the data from their, let's say, online uh, store to a background warehouse. And uh, uh, me personally did uh, some work with the Vertica and Greenplum. So Vertica is has a similar interface to MySQL. It has load data in file command. Well, Greenplum is actually a, a old PostgreSQL based on old PostgreSQL. So they're different, but um, we have used the same batch loading techniques on both. And uh, what does this mean? If you insert transaction, single transaction into the warehouse and you do this a million times, it will be very slow. They're not designed for that. Instead, how they work, you provide a file, let's say a CSV, comma separated file, with all the data and you issue one command in the warehouse which just pulls everything and it's very fast. So the replicator has the batch applier, which is capable of caching um, multiple transactions. Let's say you set a number like 10,000 or 100,000. Mm -hmm. uh, caching, preparing the CSV file, which contains these transactions, and then applying them to the warehouse in batches. <coughs> and uh, as, as it happens, this actually poses some interesting questions like uh, how to do updates if you are doing the batch loading and that's something for for thinking when you actually insert one csv file into the warehouse containing the inserts then you insert another csv file containing the deletes and uh, based on some uh, parameters you do uh, a query which joins both and uh, filter out uh, the timeline as needed. Another thing that Replicator can do is repli replicate from MySQL to Oracle. Uh, and actually from Oracle to MySQL too, but uh, from or going from Oracle, this is commercial and closed source. Uh, but this is one of my favorite topic as topics as I have <coughs> done a lot of work with it and um, how we do it. So we generally have two replicators, the master and the slave. Why I'm underlining this? Because you could have master-slave replication with a single replicator. Because replicator is cap capable of um, extracting from MySQL relay logs directly. So you don't even need to have two replicators. But having them, uh, but having them two, is very convenient because you can do, you can easily filter what you need on the slave. And uh, you could have one MySQL hosting replicator, one Oracle slave, and one MySQL slave. Let's say for doing backups, because um, it's a lot easier, faster to do backups from the slave. So, how to make MySQL to Oracle replication work? How did we do it? We had to develop a separate applier for the Oracle database. Oracle has also JDBC driver, so we use that. And um, we apply on the Oracle via the JDBC driver. Of course, we need to have uh, row-based replication on the MySQL. 
if you had uh, statement replication, the trivial statements will work. But uh, of course the dialects are so different that if you have at least some uh, difference there, it will fail. With row replication we avoid that. And uh, also row replication allows us to filter and transform them, the, the transactions as needed. Uh, one mm, major like, challenge with uh, these heterogeneous deployments is the character set issue, the data type issues, uh, like with enumeration type. Oracle does not have it. So, and uh, MySQL, on the other hand, it writes not the enum values. For example, you have enumeration colors, red, green, blue, etc. If you insert into a table red in the binary log, you will not have red you will have like one. If you insert blue in the binary log, you will have two. It even rhymes. <laughs> so, what we um, do, we have a filter on the master side, which uh, when sees a enumeration value, it will query the database, database of MySQL and transform from one to red from two to blue. And this way we transfer this uh, as a string to Oracle. And on the Oracle side we just have a bar char or something like that. Uh, also on the Oracle side we have uh, mappings, like uh, you know MySQL uh, uses lowercase usually, uh, Oracle prefers uppercase for column names or table names. So we can filter these and transform the case on the fly. And um, we also have a filter which optimizes updates. And this is pretty important for performance because um, MySQL, when you do an update uh, on a multi-column table, even, and if you change only one column, if others didn't change, it will write everything to the binary log. So, with a filter we can leave only the column that did change. Um, let's see how this works. So, this is a separate server, and I have uh, already tungsten replicator set up as a master and uh, as a slave on Oracle. And uh, let's have just some interesting queries running which are not supported in MySQL and are supported on Oracle, which is a general use case. <coughs> so I will create a set table, a table which contains a set of numbers. It is not, it's, it's not, okay. It currently does not exist in Oracle. Mm, you had a syn didn't you have a syntax? There was a space missing? No. Not. We'll just uh, create a table on the MySQL. So, is there a space missing? No. Nope. It's what? Tungsten no. from... Oh, I get it. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I was um, looking the wrong from. Yeah. And now th th this uh, statement uh, replicated to Oracle and the table is there. We usually do not replicate the DL in the heterogeneous environments, but uh, it's easier to show the demo. Um, because of the dialect difference, we do not do encourage that. So, let's insert some, some data, some numbers. Um, I could show you how it looks in THL, but you already saw that. But what I want to show you how it looks in DHL is a transaction uh, having three rows. So I have, I have uh, committed a transaction which inserts three rows, so three insert statements. Okay. If I go to the Oracle slave and issue command trepctl services, 
I can see the last applied sequence number. And uh, if I use command THL, with this last sequence number, I can drill down to this transaction. And here you can see a row event um, which contains three those three transactions, but they are all as row-based events. So instead of the insert into blah blah blah, you have uh, action that this is an insert on which schema it is executed, table name, and uh, the rows. <coughs> so we have inserted uh, ID free and uh, value 30. Uh, as you can see, we do not have column names here. And uh, for Oracle, it actually appears to be a good thing, because on Oracle, column names uh, uh, usually are uppercase, but that's not the main issue. You have some reserved words in Oracle that are very commonly used in MySQL. And if you, you, you usually need to, you would need to rename those columns in Oracle, which uh, is not trivial. So instead, when you don't have any columns, you just need to have <coughs> column order identical on MySQL and Oracle. Order. <coughs> so in this case, it is good that we do not have column names. Um, in some other heterogeneous environments, it, we, all, we actually need to have them. Um, we will talk a little bit about that. So let's see where this data is successfully <coughs> replicated. Okay, so we have a table with, <coughs> with five rows. And uh, the idea behind this is that then you can use, for example, a set operator in Oracle like intersect, but just uh, intersect these sets. So what I did, I selected from this table where IDs are larger than um, 3 and uh, smaller than 4. And I received the, the answer. <coughs> so you can use multiple databases in your environment if you have them and need the flexibility. Let's talk a little bit about the slave lag. Um, when you have an, when you have a lot of load on your MySQL replication cluster, um, the slave mm, will lag, and uh, this happens because the uh, slave apply thread in the native MySQL is single-threaded. So if everything you had uh, in, on the master, you had this complex query uh, execution. Uh, on the slave, you are just down to a single thread. And uh, this is just slower than the master. That's why if you have a lot of load, the slave will start to lag. How to solve it? You take tungsten replicator. Even uh, a single replicator, you don't need the multi, uh, uh, the master and slave separately. You just take a single replicator. There is a single installer command which takes over from the native MySQL replication. It's very easy. Uh, it connects to the binary logs. It it just downloads the MySQL binary logs and, uh, of course, extracts from them, parses them, and... Uh, so, so uh, does it pretend to be like a MySQL slave? In essence, yes. So it connects directly to MySQL, it doesn't read uh, the binary log file? Yes, in this case, it pretends to be MySQL slave. <coughs> this so is if called you had a firewall, you would have to open up the database port? You had to open up 3306, not SSH or anything? Oh. In any case, you will have to open well. something. Even for the pure replicator, it uses some ports. Right. Yeah. 
But uh, yes, it connects as a slave. It downloads the relay logs. Um, it parses them locally to upload the master. And uh, then, if you have a sharded database, so again, this is a, a use case. If you have the use case, <coughs> it's perfect. It will uh, partition your uh, transaction flow into multiple streams and apply those uh, streams in parallel in different threads. This way, raising the performance and curing the slave lag. Let's look a little bit deeper how this, how this works and uh, what is the best uh, application for this. So, look for workloads that have independent stream of updates. Example, a database which contains multiple tenants and uh, each tenant has its own data in separate schemas. Uh, of course, you will have in the database some shared data, which is shared between the multiple tenants. Um, and this data will be serialized. So what happens? If you... Uh, if tenant one, ins tenant 1 inserts data into its schema, it replicates out. Uh, tenant 2 inserts into its schema, it replicates out. And the slave applies them in parallel. If um, there is some uh, global client table, and it is changed, something is inserted into it, all these multiple threads will wait will commit, 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 finish committing, and um, then the serialized data will be committed. So, if your application has a lot of shared data updates, it will not increase the performance as much. But if the shared data is updated rarely, it will improve the performance, because there will be no, this, no weight <coughs> like that. Installation. You can use tungsten installer. This is a example command. I can give the slides uh, after the talk. But I will just show you how to do it again with the tungsten sandbox. <coughs> but uh, in order to test this, you will need pretty beefy machines. So I will just show you the principle. So I'm going to the tungsten replicator folder. I will raise this up. And issuing tungsten sandbox command, which uses the direct dimension direct topology to read uh, directly for, from the MySQL master. We will also add one MySQL slave. MySQL slave, not uh, tungsten slave and one tungsten slave with five channels. So we will have one MySQL master, one native MySQL slave, and one tungsten replicator slave with five parallel applied channels. With this you can uh, run various tests. You can, for example, insert a lot of data on the master, but bef before that stopping the replication. You insert a lot of data on the master, and you turn on the MySQL slave. And you calculate the time, how long does it take for the native MySQL slave to apply all this. And you save that time. Then you take, take the tungsten replicator and turn it on with the parallel apply. And calculate the time, how, how long does it take. And you can compare. And I will show you some numbers. But first, let's just... Uh, see how how this is set up so i will create uh, multiple schemas the shards on the master and then on the db3 which is the tungsten replicator slave i will issue a tref command called status 
minus name shards. And the output of this command doesn't fit here. <laughs> but we can see it automatically assigned free shards because we created a free database, free schemas in MySQL. And uh, their ID is, uh, corresponds to the database name. And we can see on each of this shard the last applied sequence number. So here is shard <coughs> DB1 with last applied sequence number 0. Here is shard DB2 with last applied sequence number 1 and db3 with last applied sequence number 2. What I will do now, I will um, insert some data into one of these charts. So I'm connecting to the MySQL master, to the database 1. I'm creating a table there and, create, and inserting some uh, that is. If I go back again to the replicator shards output, we can see that the shard db1 has last applied sequence number 4. So, because we created two transactions, it increased. And uh, in general, that is how, how it works. Your application inserts into one, tr uh, into one shard, into another, into one, into another. And these uh, shards, multiple shards, they just handle it in parallel and uh, keep up updating their position. And uh, to show you some performance comparisons, here is a one hour C's bench run <coughs> on 30 schemas which uh, my SQL replication slave took 30 minutes and uh, tungsten replicator with a parallel apply took 17 minutes. Um, again, these numbers really depend whether you have how often you have the shared data being updated. When you say one hour suspension, run, uh, how many times? <coughs> how many what? How many suspension clients? I have not run this, sorry. Okay. I don't know that data. Here's another example which, ah, uh, the previous example had uh, cache resident workflow when everything fit into the memory. But um, uh, the next example is uh, input output bound uh, workload, which uh, MySQL replication took 228 minutes and the replicator is uh, 51 minutes. And uh, you can easily test it with your data by just taking the sandbox, as I showed previously, and uh, running your application against it. I think that's the best way to test how your application behaves, because really there is no uh, formula to calculate it. So, question. Uh, MySQL 5.6 will have a uh, similar feature, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, why is Tungsten better? Well, currently uh, we have not seen uh, like a normal toolkit which you could easily use for that. Okay. I think uh, we should compare. But currently, there are just, uh, it's not so easy to use, and there's no tool. Okay. <coughs> Let's talk about how you can customize the replicator for your needs. So, as mentioned, uh, you can do very specialized pipelines with different extractors, filters, and appliers. So, we already seen different databases supported, and so on. You can write new filters. Uh, they're usually written in Java or JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript makes it very easy because you just open up a text file, edit it, and uh, 
reconfigure the replicator, it, uh, it just works. You don't need to have Eclipse environment and everything else. Um, it is not compiled every time. The ja JavaScript is just compiled during the load time into Java native code, bytecode. So it's, the speed is the same as of native Java class. You can tackle the Java code by yourself. Um, here's a hackathon example we had uh, in Sardinia previous year. Um, we developed a MySQL to MongoDB replication. So, SQL to NoSQL. And uh, what was needed is, in this standard pipeline, two things. Of course, uh, the MongoDB applier, which would connect to the MongoDB and uh, insert the data, um, and column name filters. MongoDB, when you insert something into MongoDB, it's like key set. It's a uh, key name equals uh, key value. Um, so you need, it's like object, so you need to, if you have a table, let's say clients, and uh, the table has uh, columns ID and name, when you replicate it to Mongo, you need to say that, uh, hey, I'm inserting a client which has ID equals 5 and name equals uh, John. So. And as you have seen previously, originally the row replication events do not contain the column names because the binary log does not contain the column names. How, to, how do we solve it? We introduce column name filter. When transactions come in on a new table which we have not process, processed previously, we just uh, query the database for the, met, for the description of the table. We we check the column names, column types, and uh, cache it into memory. And this allows us to provide MongoDB the needed data. <coughs> Installation, again, is pretty simple. It's, uh, we have this all in the wiki page. You don't need to remember this. <coughs> and it's uh, more than it really is. You just say that it is MySQL, you provide the host name, passwords, and uh, you provide this MongoDB type as, as a slave. <coughs> okay, we have talked already about JavaScript. If you would like to test uh, not only test, but if you would like to tackle the replicator, you're welcome to do this. You will need uh, JDK, Java, JDK 1.6. Uh, you will need to check out the replicator. The address is in the Google Code project page. <coughs> and when you check it, check it out, there is a builder project. When you run it, it will uh, check out any other all other needed projects and provide you a build. And then uh, we use Eclipse for development. So if you have Eclipse, you just pop it up and uh, browse the code, develop some new applier for your favorite database, or maybe even an extractor. With that, um, I would like to show you a few comments and slides about the um, product from which we live. So, you have seen that the replication is versatile, it's flexible, but um, it, is not, it does not ensure that the databases are protected from the failure. So if your master dies, you actually need to reconfigure the slave to become a new master. Or you need to have scripts that automate this. And uh, first it might seem a trivial task, but uh, when you dive deeper and you do a lot of testing, you see a lot of corner cases. And really, our tests run all night and uh, before each build we see marvelous things. 
how network connectivity be, changes the failover scenarios and similar. So this is what Tungsten Enterprise provides. It uh, has the components needed for that. Also, when you have, like, uh, imagine five replicators, it becomes a little bit difficult to administer. Again, with the enterprise version, we provide centralized tools that uh, gets you a centralized view and easy to administer. Um, so all in all, it is cluster management. Here is an example of the cluster using replication only, no, no other components. This is how it would look like. You have uh, a few um, HTTP clients on top, and they access underlying databases, which are replicated. So we have one master, two slaves, the data is shared. But is this logic enough? How do you um, know which uh, node is currently a master? Because you need to send the inserts to the master. Then again, if you do a lot of reads, you would like slaves to serve them, not the master. You'd like to offload that. And with only the replicator, it is not trivial questions. You would need to, to use some third-party software and to do a lot of configuration. So, what uh, we do, we provide Tungsten Enterprise Cluster. And this adds two major components, connector and manager. Connector is connectivity <coughs> layer. It is a proxy, MySQL proxy, and actually PostgreSQL, <coughs> which, connect, uh, which talks the native uh, protocol. So you can connect directly to the connector as to a MySQL database. It looks to your application as a database. But underneath it has logic, which you can tune and configure for your needs. And uh, example, all writes will be directed to the master automatically. If you wish, uh, the slaves of uh, uh, the reads from a particular session will be directed to the slaves. And this is easy. Uh, the more difficult things are like um, session consistency routing. For example, imagine you are doing a write as an application and uh, you instantly are doing a read of the same data. You would like to see that read, you would like to get that read from the master because the slaves might be lagging. So uh, the connector can do it for you. You can just set session ID equals, let's say, one, and if you do a write, an insert with session ID 1, and then you do a select with session ID 1, you will get both from the master. <coughs> but uh, if other parts of your application are using session ID 10, 11, 12, and they are inserting data, the session ID 1 will receive the data from the slaves. So this is uh, smart load balancing. So that's connectivity. It uh, makes your application <coughs> see the cluster with, let's say, three databases as one database. Uh, then there are managers. The managers are constantly monitoring the cluster nodes and talking between each other. Each of the managers has a uh, the same synchronized view of the cluster. So. If you connect to manager 1 or to manager 3 or 2, you will see the cluster in the same state. You don't need a centralized administration server, which is important uh, in order to avoid single point of failure. Um, and they allow you to do complex tasks very easily. So if you need to switch my master with a slave, to do maintenance. For example, you need to change hard, hard disk on your master. You connect to the manager and you write switch enter. That's it, one command. They will switch roles. The applications will be, uh, the connectors will suspend applications 
for those uh, seconds while the switch happens. And then resume. Failover. If master fails, the managers uh, notice this and uh, automatically choose the uh, slave with highest uh, sequence number and promote it to the master. In the meantime, connectors are informed and the applications are seamlessly routed to the new master. And uh, this really works. We have uh, clients with uh, hundreds of these kind of servers in, in one network, with these kind of clusters. Um, so you can do various things, uh, zero <coughs> downtime upgrades, failover switches, etc. How easy would it be to introduce new nodes into the system? Mm -hmm. like, you just, uh, it's, pr it's pretty easy. Uh, you need to, uh, first of course you need to provision the new slave. That means uh, take a backup from the cluster and uh, restore it on the new slave. With this setup, you don't need to take a backup from the master. You can take it from the slave, restore it on the fourth slave, and uh, when it will start up, it will catch up any missing changes automatically. Um, <coughs> and you need to do a reconfiguration of the managers. There's a command for that. So it's possible, maybe it's not uh, trivial, but you can do that. Um, and conclusion. So, this talk was a light-hearted introduction to the replicator. <laughs> it really can do a lot more. Um, <coughs> and in the real deployments, it, it is harder. Um, we face various uh, challenges and issues. Um, if you get in trouble or you would like to try not only open source, just contact us. Um, we also have a partner, and he's in room, Sky is 12, and uh, Pasi, maybe you would like to introduce. So I work for Sky and Scale, and we are partners with uh, Continuent uh, globally, but I only represent the, the Nordic market. And uh, who are we, Sky and Scale? We are a bunch of people from, uh, from MySQL who uh, started SkySQL uh, uh, 18 months ago. <coughs> and uh, we are some uh, 70 people together with Monte Programs guys who, who develop MariaDB. So we are some 20% of the old uh, MySQL team. So pr we're pretty much the old, old team but with a new logo. Uh, we only have one office that's based here in, uh, in Espo. Other, other guys work from home in, in I think it says 20 countries. And we do exactly the same things we used to do over the, at the MySQL. So uh, support, training, consulting around MySQL and around uh, uh, many products in the ecosystem. So we, we have uh, started working more with partners like Continuum for high availability, Sphinx for searches, uh, InfiniD for, for um, data warehousing. So we try to work with many components from, uh, from the ecosystem. Anything else? No? They actually provided us a uh, customer which needed Oracle to MySQL replication. Sure. That was very interesting. <laughs> and yes, then, actually. We yes. used to have the, the other way around, MySQL to Oracle, but one customer needed to build a yeah. new web front to, to a uh, legacy system, so, so we built, built that replication. Yeah. You built it, we sold it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very cool. So if you want to, to discuss uh, afterwards about um, continuing stuff or other services around MySQL, you're welcome to contact me. I will be your first point of contact. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Pasi. <coughs> Thank you, everyone. This is the end.